This video is sponsored by Brilliant. All right, so the setup here is you are going to select two different points on the surface of a sphere, any two you want, and then a third point is going to be randomly selected, also on the surface. Now, if the plane triangle that is created by connecting those three points is acute, all angles less than 90 degrees, you win. Otherwise, you lose. So in this case, we would win since this triangle is acute. Now the question is, how should you select the first two points to maximize your odds of winning? Okay, let's get to the solution. The first thing to realize is that if you're asked to pick two points on a sphere, no matter which points you pick, you can always rotate the sphere so the points are symmetric about this horizontal axis. Kind of like if I asked you to pick two points on a circle. I can rotate that circle so that they look like this, symmetric about this horizontal axis that I add in after the rotation. With a sphere, same idea. Axes don't matter in this problem, so I can just rotate the entire thing, then add in the axes later, and I can call these points some x, comma, 0, comma, some height z, and x, comma, 0, comma, negative z. So all we've done so far is establish that any two points we pick can be labeled as we see here. We don't need to worry about the entire sphere when picking our two points, just the x and z values for this nice symmetric setup. In fact, to make this even easier, I'll go from 3D to 2D and just look at the cross section of the sphere, with the points at those same locations separated by some central angle theta. This is more useful because that angle theta is all we care about, since it completely defines the x and z values. So the new question is, what central angle created by the two points we pick will maximize our odds of winning? We went from six unknowns we have to solve for to one due to symmetry. Okay, so with this setup, I'm going to draw these three lines, which are actually planes slicing our sphere where we're just seeing the cross section. But I drew these because anything up here or down here is gonna be a loss. If the third point is anywhere on that part of the sphere, then there will be an angle that's greater than or equal to 90 degrees. Probably should have had my animator use solid lines instead, but just note a third point on those, on the planes, is also a loss because then we'll have a right triangle. Then it'll also be a loss if the third point is placed anywhere in this red section, as again, we'll get an obtuse triangle. Everything else is a win, which will shade in green. Now if you're saying, hey wait, a third point like right here in the green seems to yield an obtuse triangle as well, which would be a loss, remember we're dealing with a sphere. So that point actually has a completely different y coordinate. It's more out of the screen than the other two points in this case. And if I turn the sphere a little, we can see how that is in fact an acute triangle and would yield a win for us. So yes, any third point in the green on the surface of the sphere is a win. So now we need to find the central angle theta that maximizes the green surface area here. So we're going to make an equation for that green surface area with the help of a really nice formula. Fun fact, if you slice a sphere with two parallel planes, the surface area between the planes is 2 pi r times d, where d is the distance between them. That's cool, because it doesn't matter where the planes are, so long as they're both parallel and intersect the sphere. If you didn't know that, the proof is basic calculus. I won't show it, but just revolve the top half of the unit circle around the x-axis and find the surface area from an arbitrary a to b. So going back to our 2D cross-section, the entire surface area between the horizontal planes, as in the green plus that red cap on the right, will be 2 pi r d, where d is the distance between the planes, and that distance is 2 z. So I'll rewrite that, and that's the entire middle section, but we just want the green. So we need to subtract the red cap on the right, which is easy because of our awesome formula. 
Because just imagine another plane here on the right tangent to the sphere. The formula still applies, where the surface area between the planes, that red cap, is 2 pi r d2, where d2, the distance between those vertical planes, is r minus the x-coordinate. And from here, I'm just going to let the radius be 1, since it really doesn't matter. And we have this. Now, if we make this triangle, where that base angle is theta over 2, we can calculate x and z in terms of theta. Since the radius is 1, then z is going to be sine of theta over 2, and the x will be cosine of theta over 2. Plugging those in, we have our equation for the winning surface area as a function of theta. The probability of winning would just be that, the green surface area, over the entire surface area of the sphere, 4 pi r squared, or just 4 pi since r is 1. So I'll just distribute that 2 pi, and then here is the final simplified equation. This is our equation for the chance of winning based on the location of our first two points. To maximize it, we just do some calc 1. Take the derivative, set it equal to 0, rearrange some stuff, and we find that the optimal angle is 2 tan inverse of 2, or roughly 126.9 degrees. That is how far apart we should separate our two points to maximize that green surface area. Any third point placed in that green gives us an acute triangle. And the odds of winning, plugging in 2 tan inverse of 2 back into the probability equation, is 61.8% or 1 over the golden ratio. Yeah, like I said, out of nowhere. Seems to have no business being there. But the reason it shows up, at least analytically, is because if you actually put in 2 tan inverse of 2 in for theta, then do some canceling, you get this equation with sine and cosine of tan inverse. This is classic algebra or pre-calc. You can make a triangle where tangent of the angle is 2 meaning that angle is tan inverse of 2. Thus the hypotenuse is root 5, so sine of that angle, sine of tan inverse of 2, is 2 over root 5, and cosine is 1 over root 5, but it's being multiplied by 1 half. Then simplifying this, you will end up with 1 over the golden ratio, like magic. And that's just about it for this video, but if you enjoy mathematical puzzles like this one, then I highly recommend checking out Brilliant, the sponsor of this video. Brilliant is an educational platform home to thousands of lessons in math, science, and engineering, with new lessons being added monthly. And what's great is that they really focus on interactive exercises, intuitive visuals, and applying what you've learned to the real world, making it a great practical tool for understanding technical topics and the world around you on a fundamental level. Something I also love and consistently notice with Brilliant is their courses almost always include topics beyond what I learned in school. Like even though I took a few differential equations courses within my engineering curriculum, their differential equations course includes topics that I had never learned. So it can be a really useful tool to expand your knowledge even for courses you may have already taken. And you can now try everything Brilliant has to offer free for a full 30 days. Just go to brilliant.org slash zackstar or click the link in the description below. Plus, the first 200 of you to sign up will get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription. With that, going to end that video there. Thanks as always to my supporters on Patreon. Social media links to follow me are down below, and I'll see you all in the next video.